In Atato Katoa, good evening. The government's revealed Chinese state-sponsored hackers breached parliamentary networks back in 2021. It follows revelations that China also conducted a cyber espionage campaign in the UK and US. Jamie Insull reports. In public, New Zealand and China appear to be good friends, but behind the scenes, a Chinese state-backed group has been targeting the heart of our democracy. This is the first uh, very serious attack that I'm aware of in, against one of our democratic institutions. The government today revealing that in 2021, the group hacks the parliamentary service and the parliamentary council office, which drafts our laws. Called APT40, the group's associated with the Chinese Ministry of State Security. The breach was detected and the hackers blocked, but no one will say how long that took and what they accessed. Information of a sensitive or strategic nature uh, was not removed from uh, the system. Some information was removed uh, from the networks. Today's significant announcement warranting a rare media appearance from the head of our spy agency. This is the first time that we have attributed um, state-sponsored uh, malicious cyber activity um, to the People's Republic of China for intrusion into New Zealand government systems. That's sort of raising the level of uh, complaint to China, really publicly calling out China. In 2021, the Labour-led government also rang alarm bells about the same Chinese group conducting malicious cyber activity in New Zealand. However, in that case, the strikes weren't against democratic institutions. It is showing a pattern of behaviour and we don't well, we know it's not acceptable. It is totally unacceptable. A pattern afflicting liberal democracies. The UK and the US also calling out China for cyber campaigns targeting their politicians and officials, including allegedly accessing the details of 40 million voters held by the UK's Electoral Commission. A clear and persistent pattern of behaviour that signals hostile intent from China. There's no evidence that the Electoral Commission has had, there's been any interference in our elections or through the Electoral Commission whatsoever. Those countries have hit back with sanctions, but New Zealand hasn't. The other countries that you've mentioned have got legislation that enables them to apply those. We don't. The Chinese embassy calls the claims groundless and irresponsible. The foreign minister instructed his officials to speak with the Chinese ambassador about the intrusion not that the minister would speak about that today. Can you please talk to us about what you asked of the Chinese ambassador? Apologise too. It's understood the ambassador's response echoed China's response to our Five Eyes partners. Complete denial. Jamie Ensor, News Hub. Well, our political editor, Jenna Lynch, joins us now from Parliament. Now, the spy bosses have just fronted a select committee, Jenna. Did they raise any more concerns about China? One quite concerning revelation, the spies have identified seven New Zealand citizens who have been contracted by a third party to train China's People's Liberation Army. Now, the spy bosses said that these seven people were passing on expertise or training that they gained from either being employed by the New Zealand Defence Force or our partner agencies. Obviously, that is a major national security risk that they are passing on knowledge from our defence force to an army that doesn't share the same values as us. They did note that these seven people have since ceased doing that training. However, they are concerned that more New Zealanders may be lured by high salaries to replace them. Jenna, we saw in Jamie's story the foreign minister walking off from questions about the Chinese hacking. What was that about? Yeah, despite the significance of this major international story today, there was only one story on Winston Peters' mind, and that was his four-year-long battle with the Serious Fraud Office. This all goes back to just before the 2020 election. The Serious Fraud Office began investigating uh, the legality of some donations that went to the New Zealand First Foundation, separate from the party, but some of the money went to New Zealand First. In July 2022, the High Court ruled that two men were not guilty of obtaining by deception $750,000 and today the Court of Appeal dismissed the Serious Fraud Officer's bid to appeal that ruling. Now Winston Peters labelled it a malicious, unfounded attack by the Serious Fraud Office, one which affected his party's image in an election year. He is demanding an 
an apology from both the serious fraud office and the media who reported the case. Well, it means they spent over $4 million on malicious political attack on a political party, subscribed to by many people in the media over five years, and they have failed not once, not twice, but three times. It's a disgrace. As for the SFO, they released a statement and it was far from an apology. They welcomed the findings, in particular the finding from the Court of Appeal that the High Court judge was wrong to rule that the donations were not party political donations. The SFO director said today's findings reinforce the importance of both taking the case and appealing that High Court judgment, saying New Zealanders have a right to know who is funding our political parties and this right should not be as easily circumvented as through depositing funds into a trust. Political editor, Jenna Lynch, Tenakwe.